Monday, May the 4th, 2020. T well, minus four. Well, you say, may the 4th be with you then, son. Very good. <laughs> Very good. T minus four? Four. Uh, D day, Friday. Oh, the, yeah, see, I, I, I don't think after Friday's meeting we'll have a definitive decision. You don't? I don't. Why? Unless it's been led by the government the previous day who are meeting on Thursday. I believe the Prime Minister of the UK is making an announcement on Thursday regards steps that are being taken to open up the country, as they call it. And I don't believe, Richard, I think they may reaffirm this is what we'd like to do and we have discussed other options, but I will be staggered if they definitively say, this is what we're doing. Well, I don't think anymore it'll be government directive that stops the league from continuing. I think it suits the government to encourage the league, Premier League particularly, to continue playing football. But there's much to discuss this morning along those lines, so... Oh, here we go. <laughs> me with such concern. I'm only exactly. giving you, I'm no. running past you a selection of newspaper Excellent. cuttings that have leapt out at me, Andrew, across this weekend. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first of them would be from the Daily Mirror, uh, Emil Heskey. Yeah. I'd be scared. 100% I'd be scared. Um, uh, Emil Heskey admits Barmey death toll from the virus is a huge uh -huh. issue for black and ethnic minority players being told to follow Project restart. I think there will be considerable concerns mm -hmm. amongst the boys in that respect. Don't disagree with that. I, 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 uh, I understand where Emil is, is coming from 100%. Um, again, I don't think anyone is going to ask any footballer to go on a football pitch if they're worried. And ultimately, regardless what clubs, uh, affiliations, associations decide, Premier League committees decide, if the footballers are not having it, then nothing starts again. Well, it's interesting you say that because uh, I'll go through these in order, <laughs> uh, but that subject will come back up again. Uh, trust me. Uh, Strop Flight, this one, the back page of the Daily Mirror Saturday. Top six want to finish the campaign, but face a fight with the majority of clubs who want the season scrapped over the neutral grounds plan. So there, straight away, is mm -hmm. another issue. Uh, Paul Barber, the chief exec of Brighton, has said, look, you know, I, I don't know how many home games Brighton have got left. Five, I think. Five out of nine, I think. But, but he, his argument is you take the advantage away from us from playing home matches. Uh, granted, there isn't the same pressure because we're in a neutral stadium, but one doesn't necessarily balance the other. And we have to think, quotes, about the integrity of the competition by no, changing no. it oh, to on. this dramatic degree. Integrity? Why? Well, haven't we, why do we, I, I get confused with the integrity of the competition. These are extraordinary circumstances, mm -hmm. really extraordinary, the likes of which hopefully we will never see again, but hopefully future generations will never have to cope with and, uh, again, Richard. And we have to do things differently. And things, if they're going to be concluded, will have to be different. And Paul has to understand that, that when he talks about integrity, sorry, have we not already smashed the integrity of the FA Cup into the long grass? You're Some games are played with VAR, others are not. How is that, how well, is that not You and I have always integrity? agreed on that subject, and I, I, I believe that's a very strong argument. But let me put the counter-argument on Paul's behalf, which is, uh, I'll give you Coventry as an example. 32 years in the top league, uh -huh. relegated, yeah. never saw them again. Uh -huh. When the stakes are that high, yes. and you're talking about the future of a football club, you can't... I, I, I think any club in the situation now in the Premier League scrapping to stay afloat, wants every natural advantage I that do. they are but they're due. Not, if they're not and they going don't to, want to listen, lose that I, advantage. The one thing I don't get, maybe you'll explain to me, um, being more intelligent and more astute about no, these. You no, no, that, you are. Nonsense. Right, what I don't understand is the fact that why do we have to have 10 neutral grounds? I don't what, know. What advantage I can't explain that. Why, why is that good health-wise? as opposed to just playing one game in your own ground. No idea. Why have 10 grounds I think the thinking games? is that you take games away from epicentres, that you remove them to places where there isn't the same danger, allegedly. Um, but I don't see that, because the game today is... is, is <laughs> Manchester United fans, be careful here, Liverpool fans, other big clubs, yeah. don't necessarily draw the core of their support from within a three-mile radius of oh, the ground no, anymore. Oh, far from it. So... I don't see what difference it makes. So, but the thing is as well, 
I, I just get it. Wouldn't Paul Barber rather play than not play? Yes, but he doesn't want relegation, and no, nor well, do the six well, other well, clubs. Well, at the can bottom. I just say, if you don't want relegation, Paul, have a word with your players and say, see these next nine games, lads. Come on, let's buckle in. We're good enough to stay. That's up. okay, but come on, but, but you're no, they're no different from that anyone is else. Moving the natural advantage I talked about of the five home games he has, which they could win. And removing the disadvantage of the four away games. So from the Mail on Sunday, we'll play on, but no drops. Uh, clubs fear neutral grounds mean they'll lose home advantage, correct? Big mm -hmm. health issues still to be resolved with the players, mm -hmm. correct? But the bottom six are saying, OK, we'll finish the season, but there's no relegation. <laughs> which takes us back to Friday's conversation with oh. Simon Jordan, which was fascinating. Mm -hmm. The next natural step, if there's no relegation, is that there is no... Promotion. promotion and there is enough money as Simon pointed out to pass on to the EFL if that were to be the case because there's no parachute payments being paid to mm -hmm. three clubs that would go down so you've got well, the money but then there's the, the, the Leeds and uh, West Brom who are I'm not saying definitely coming up because we know what that championship is like and we know Leeds have collapsed in quite a few seasons over the last 10. Mm -hmm. Many times when it looked they were absolute shoe-ins to get promotion. So we know it's nothing definite. But the two most likely to come up are being denied then the following year an opportunity to play in the Premier League because of nothing but in their control. But that is not of the Premier League's no, no, concern not. because their, their league is a separate isn't that, entity. Doesn't that to damage the, rest of the, the integrity pyramid? of the Premier League? If I'm in the Premier League, <laughs> I'm not that bothered. Well, exactly. Selfish. Yes. Selfish. I'm protecting and looking after my own well-being and self-interest. No, we should protect the whole game. Nonsense. Yes, we should. Then why don't we pass? Well, on? why don't we get rid of Coventry and all you lot then? Well, I think protect the game. I, I think. Well, I tell you what we'll do: get rid of every club in the second and third, first and second divisions, and then make the whole other league stronger. <laughs> I think that's happening to be <laughs> honest with you. But I, I, if that were the case and that we cared that deeply about it, then we would look after them better in normal times. And we don't. We don't care. No. We, we don't have to care. care. We have Here's to care. another factor which I don't think has occurred to many back to the Daily Mirror Simon Mullock uh, Premier League clubs are facing a player revolt over the plans to start the season it's understood that a number of foreign stars <laughs> have approached their individual governments for advice on whether wow. it will be safe yeah now you think of the number of foreign stars oh, in the Premier League talking to individual governments not our government not no. the UK government no yeah. their own governments taking their government advice now that then further further complicates and compromises the integrity of the competition if they're not playing. Listen, we don't know what's going on in these meetings with the Premier League clubs. We don't know what they're sitting to talk. They must be debating all these issues that we're talking about here. And they must be debating them thoroughly. And, and the one thing they have to do as a collective is come out wh whatever way they go. And that's why I keep thinking, that's why I keep saying to you, I think they'll fudge it again this week and give themselves as much time as possible before they make a, have to make a definitive decision. Has to come, I believe, has to come by the end of this month, but it doesn't have to come on Friday. And I think that um, when we've got all these collective, it has to come with unity, Richard. They have to be as one. Well, if the Premier League is to come hmm. out of this with any credit at all, it has to come out That's as the one, problem we've got with now. one voice. We've got six, and I'll come on to that as well. We've got six that are broken away. But yeah. on the subject of players that might not want to, under their government advice, um, top Dutch agent Rob Janssen, chairman of the EFAA, the union that represents agents mm -hmm. and intermediaries throughout Europe, says, Tell you what's going to be most interesting. Can clubs force players to play football under these circumstances? No. And he's alluding to the fact that if the players don't play, then wages may be withheld. You see, it's, it's, when you talk about that forced players to play, of course they can. Players are rich enough now and, and, and financially self-sufficient enough now to, if they don't want to play, they don't have to play. But I go back to... But that's only top-end Premier League stuff. Yeah, I know it is. But what about the EFL? Well, the EFL, you, you don't care about, about it. Well, you so don't care about it. Well, no, I'm putting the question back to Well, what I'm saying is, it's a, it's a really difficult question then to answer if you go down to the EFL, correct? Because I look around and I see uh, supermarkets. I know you're going to say it's not the same thing and all that. I see supermarkets where people have to go and work in the supermarket, have to go and work amongst other people who they've never met, they've never seen, who they might come in contact with. They have to do it day in, day out because they have to put food on their own table for their own children, for their own families. People in all sorts of NHS workers don't have a choice no. as to whether they have to go to work. Agreed. They go to, they have to go to but work. But none of them, the biggest difference is, none of them is worth a hundred million pounds. <laughs> and in an... I'll, I'll try, somebody's life might be. Absolutely. No, listen, I agree with you. Yeah. So but what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, articulating is the thinking that's going on right. within football, which has been decimated by this problem. Let me just run Go a couple on. of other quotes past you, because it's unfair just to quote Paul Barber. Yeah. Um, Brighton, 
uh, Watford, West Ham, Bournemouth, Norwich, uh, to a lesser extent, but they're in the group. Aston Villa mm -hmm. are opposed to using neutral grounds for the remaining games. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul Barber's made his point. Uh, Karen Brady has said that we can't uh, compromise the integrity <laughs> of, of, <laughs> of football by playing so. Uh, Jeff Mostyn, the Bournemouth chairman, is understood to be one of those that have spoken against the proposals. Um, against the proposal to play to play, play neutral on, grounds like Karen neutral Brady here, here it is the West Ham vice chairman wrote in her column uh, in yesterday's national newspaper the one she pens for that I'm not going to mention uh, she supported completing the season and that any compromises have to be fair and uphold the integrity well she's saying the plans aren't isn't she mm -hmm. so and they, 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 why are the clubs that have got concerns this is this is typically newspaper why are the clubs that have got concerns now being spoken of as Rebel clubs. Yeah, I know. I know. Just because they have a different view doesn't just, make them just rebel. Just because they're doing what you you're just saying. Just because I have a different view doesn't make me themselves. hairy or disgraced. But it's it's well, it's a way I don't, of, I don't of know. that's a debate. That's for another time. It's a way of, <laughs> of, of it's a way of just two footed tackle, isn't it? It's it's let's get one in first before we do anything else. Pop this in the headline: Rebel clubs. Threatened chances of completing the season. Richard, so says Richard it doesn't Sam matter Wallace what, what, the six, Telegraph. what six were sitting bottom of the league this year. Take that six out of there now and shift them, put another six in there. They would be the rebel clubs. They're, they are trying to protect... They're not rebel clubs. No, they but they're trying to protect league. the football club. Quite They're right. trying to protect the interests of the football club and they will do that. So okay. does that make them a rebel? So here's another option. <clears> I want to see your face when I mention this to you. It has been suggested um, by broadcasters elsewhere that uh, the Premier League could complete the season if they went abroad to places where there isn't COVID-19 and... New Zealand? Very close. <sighs> Australia. Taiwan. Perth Senator has given his backing to the Premier League, taking up sticks, lock, stock and barrel and go and play in Australia. I have never heard more nonsense in That's my ridiculous. life. That's ridiculous. Absolutely. So we just bring hundreds of other people into the equation. Mm. In transport. Now, I just, just want you to go back a couple of programmes. When I said to you, if I were a player whose contract were expiring on June the 30th, I would not play on under any circumstances, correct? You did. And what did you call me? Well, what did you call you me both on air and off air? You, well, we did. I, I think we, there was a difference between the two. I think we disagreed. Two. No, I just said, well, listen, if it was me and I'd been at a club for a, a length of time and they'd yeah. been good to me and looked after me and I'd be, I would have been there, um, let's say, even if I hadn't been there a length of time, say I was at Everton, and I'd gone through these two fabulous years that I had at Everton, we won mm -hmm. everything, and I'd, they haven't come to me and say, listen, Andy, we need you, can you play on for that? Do you think I would turn around and say no? No, but what about if, if your wife or someone else close to you said, Andy, listen, you can't because you need to protect yourself. If in the next three games you pick up an ACL, who's going to pay? I'd who's say, going well, to look after that's interest? unlucky. I have, to, I have to assume, yeah, that I won't pick up an ACL. So Bournemouth faced tough talks with contract rebel, here we go again, Ryan Fraser. I knew you were going to say him. Who is ready to leave the club? I, knew you were I don't know why, but if you'd have said to me, "Where is where is the Bournemouth player?" and why do I say that he's a Scot? I feel I, honestly. Why do I? I knew the you were going Scotland to say. Scotland winger, twenty-six, you were going to is keen Fraser. to move on. Why is that? And will need to be persuaded to turn out after his deal expires on June the thirtieth. Well, sorry, I just said, listen, Ryan. And do you know what you can do? You you can stay away. We'll use the rest of the lads. I'm sorry. <laughs> But you see, the, the fact that he's a Scot tickled me much. Yeah, it didn't tickle me much, I have to say. <laughs> but that's, I think that's more than Listen, understandable. I get and that, I would, Richard. I would be that's very a, that's much a player's that prerogative to do that after the 30th of June. 30th of June, yeah. That's, a, that's their prerogative to do that. I'm just saying, I'd like to think there are an awful lot of footballers around would have my opinion and, ha and say, no, I, do you know what? It's, it's extraordinary circumstances. I could pick up an ACL any time. I could, I could save myself, I could go to my new club, and then the first day of training at my new club, I can you have could. an ACL. And the difference but then is you're going to say, we wouldn't be insured. Well, I don't think the clubs are going to say to these guys, I want you to play on after the 30th of June, but you won't be insured. Now, if they told me that, that might be a different thing altogether. Well, I, I, I... So the clubs must insure them, Richard. If they're playing football, for, if Willian, let's say Willian, right? Because he's one is it, he comes have up. You ever, have you ever right. made an insurance claim that was successful if you hadn't paid the money to cover the policy? What, In other ACL? words, if, 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 your, if your home insurance policy expires yeah. and you want to make a claim seven, seven days on, good luck. I don't know, I've never made a claim. I don't think Richard. <laughs> no, but listen, the 30th of June, do you actually think Chelsea are going to say to Willian, here's the 30th of June finish. Now, we've got to go on for another month. 
six weeks maybe he's another five one. weeks so are you going to say hey, Willian you play on but you're not insured Chelsea will just pay whatever it costs the no. premium yes no. they will he's another one that's yes, already already spoken to Jose Mourinho he's on his way to Tottenham well, I, I'm, I'm not, not playing saying for Chelsea. he's not I'm not saying he's not then go to Tottenham that's fine make your decision this one's headlined crime of passion this is interesting because the debate about the suggested takeover and it suits the narrative of those who are trying to keep telling the press it's done well let me tell you now it isn't and it's some long way from being done but here's another interesting little spin-off Sheffield United owner could be jailed in Saudi Arabia if if they meet in the Premier League and they beat Newcastle after the takeover according to shock claims today the owner of Sheffield United is a Saudi um, uh, sources mm. are quoted as saying, I wouldn't imagine that Newcastle losing to Sheffield would be an event taken lightly in Saudi Arabia, no. given their track record for knee-jerk imprisonments of various royal family members. That's a moral issue, and it's an interesting thought. I, I don't place too much store by that. No. Um, I, I come back to what I've said all the way along the line. That proposed takeover, and it remains that, is under discussion and I think there are people beginning to understand the enormity of the, the, the scenario surrounding it. And, and there's, there's, I think, a momentum, Andy, that's growing, whereby people are asking the sort of questions that we have posed on this programme before now. Sabotage. Premier League plea for unity amid claims strugglers are trying to block restart plan. Who's, who's the Back saboteurs? page of the mail. The saboteurs are the bottom oh, six. No, no. So they're rebels and saboteurs. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> Just mention it. Wonderful. Off. But this interested me. What the top flight gives back? 7.6 billion contribution to GDP in 2016-17, according to accountants Ernst & Young. 3.3 um, billion taxes paid wow. by clubs. <laughs> 1.6 billion, still owed in transfers. 350 million, financial support to the lower leagues. Uh, 500,000 young people engaged in Premier League funded community programmes, wow. 100,000 jobs supported and 12,000 yeah. people directly employed by the clubs. This at a time when Matt Hancock is saying players need to have their wages cut um, and the government is encouraging football to restart. I, I, I mean, all of that confuses me. Well, listen, whatever we think about financially, the fact that the government is trying to encourage football to restart, if safe, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. I think everybody wants to see football played again not just in the uk go all across europe richard i was reading this week there's there are very few countries in europe okay i know the area de Vizier has called a halt so has belgium so has france french called a halt because the government said categorically no sport will be played in france until september the clubs didn't have an option to, stay, to play on or not they were told by the government it's not play every other country and don't forget some of these countries have been ravaged pretty much as badly as the uk has spain and italy in particular there is still a huge appetite in those two countries to finish the season, to start playing football again. I'm sure again. there is. But Germany but is another one that wants to play. Sweden, I read at the weekend, which is quite, it's going to stagger a lot of people if you, if you didn't read it. Sweden intend to start, I think, in the middle of this month with spectators in well, the Well, the grounds. Swedes have been reckless from day one. And but that's that, why what I'm saying so to you, problems. Richard, that's, you cannot just take what the UK are doing, what the Premier League are doing. Of course and saying, not. This is reckless. This is stupid. This is not the way to go when pretty much every other European nation is trying to do the same, apart from three right well, now. Well, the big one that isn't, of course, is France. Well, yes, Precious but, silver. but what I'm saying to you, football didn't make that decision. I've said to you, the British government yeah, yeah, might no, make the decision. I, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt. I've just Go got on. a few more that I need to run past you. Not oh, no, with. yeah, you're just uh, well David Silva, um, City gem set to slip away. Genius. Without a fanfare that he deserves. Shame. Genius. Shame. Wonderful. Shame. Roberto Mancini. Fanfare? I mean, come on. Who cares? Well, He's had enough out of the game. No, Given us enough as well. No, Brilliant. Do, do you understand how hard that is not to say cheerio to your mates? Yes, I when do. When you leave? Funnily enough, I do. Well, when was that? <laughs> no, I said your mates. <laughs> yeah, you're... <laughs> <laughs> it is. Complications I remember, of I remember even a couple of clubs and I never had the chance to, to go in. There you go. I, when, I, when I left Everton, it was in the close season and I never had the opportunity to go to those boys, that team. And, and well, you've them. seen plenty of them since. Now, no, only a few of them. Cologne announced Friday that three people, two yeah. players and a physiotherapist, had tested positive uh, for coronavirus. Um, this is the recklessness that I have previously been referring to. Um, Birger Vistreta, Cologne's Belgian midfielder, questioned the decision not to quarantine the rest of the squad, which he described as a bit bizarre. 
But we don't know what they're doing in Cologne, Richard. No, just leave that one there. I've got a better one for you. Okay. Paul Pogba's Excellent. <laughs> options are fading as money dwindles. Good. I thought it was on his way. I read the other day he was going to Real Madrid. Options dwindling. Good. What do you mean good? Well, what's he contributed? Why, why, why should he now benefit beyond the huge amount of money he's made from a fraudulent move to Manchester United, where he's not <laughs> lifted a finger for three seasons and has been uh, missing all... He's been, he's been more difficult to find than Lord Lucan uh, he's been for Manchester United this season. For Come United, on. yeah. One other thing that you hadn't considered, nor had I, but I did this morning when I read it, safety officers claim that their input is missing from football's restart plans. Well, it won't be, Shirley. They must be talking about it. No, they're not. By the way, you, you and read I'll tell all you these why. things. I'll tell you why. The Football Safety Officers Association, whose members are employed by the clubs, would uh -huh. normally be responsible for drafting risk assessments uh -huh. at the stadium. They're all furloughed at the moment. They're all at home. They're not working. Well, they're not working then, are they? Did you read everything this weekend? Uh, largely. What about Steve Parrish's column? How do you think of that? I, I think Steve's got a point. I think, I think he's, it was he's, really he's intelligent. More than entitled really to well pass put. that uh, point of view. Yeah, I, 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 he may be the one that's... The uh, swing. Yeah. Mm. Uh, pay and uh, play or no pay. Premier League players who opt out of playing football, if it returns, may see their wages slashed. <laughs> well, that's going to be a problem. I'll tell you that now, <laughs> straight away. Oh, uh, dear. I did go past a couple earlier here, Andy, which I'm now looking to try and find, because that... That was a theme, and it has been a theme, and it will be over the next three or four days until we get to Friday, when I think, and, and listen, you're probably right, but I think somebody's going to have to make a decision. We keep talking about it, keep putting it back and kicking but it have, into the they have made grass. a decision, a, 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 for, a temporary, not a temporary, it's a soft decision at the moment to say, we're hoping we can start, what's the date they're trotting out in June? June, June 12th? 8th or something. June 12th, know. something like that. So that's still well over five, six weeks away, five weeks away. Mm. So that's why I don't think, Richard, there'll be a definitive Yes or no on Friday. I would be amazed, especially when you say to me that there are six or seven clubs. Would they need 14? They need 14 of the Premier yeah, League Yeah, so you've clubs. got six plus one, seven. So if seven say no, then it doesn't start. That's it. So there, there, there will be a lot of um, phone calls mm. being made between now and Friday. But I would be amazed if the Premier League come out on Friday and say, we're definitely starting on the 12th or we're definitely not starting at all. Dave Kitson, former Reading striker, launched a bid to be chairman of the PFA mm. on Friday. He laid so out his plans. Uh, 24 hours later, they were in tatters. Why? Um, well, because uh, it, it was brought back to uh, the public's attention that he had previously uh, dismissed Raheem Sterling's problems um, from the terraces as self-inflicted because footballers go on Twitter and show off their riches to, to, to a large degree. So. Uh, his bid to replace Taylor faced criticism from anti-racism campaigners and as Andy Dunn here said in the Sunday Mirror, uh, great idea Dave, but uh, never ever start a campaign that you cannot win. He was never going to win that campaign, says did, Dunny. Oh, did you think he was going to win it? Did no chance. A chance. No Absolutely chance? no chance. No. no and, and, and Listen, no. no. But here's an in innovative idea Go on. in closing. Saints, I thought, well this is Southampton, but it's not. It's Northampton Rugby Club. Uh, are offering fans drive-in matches. What about if we play and fans can go to a drive-in and watch the I big know screen? That. As long as they're six feet apart. Yeah, no, no. Well, they'll be in your car. Yeah, and it's, but you have your window open. Well, because you, you have to have your your sound there. Well, no, you're, somebody will find a way to put it on your yeah, phone, won't they? I mean, come on. We're yeah, not talking about 1960s no, America I want to go here. back to that. I want to go when you put that thing on your window and you get the, <laughs> your tray and your music and your noise. <laughs> <laughs> so it was all good. And your popcorn. And your popcorn and, and everything like that. <laughs> Listen, I think they're going to try everything, Richard. They will try everything that they possibly can to, 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 to bring it back. And um, it's... Uh, Look, there's, no, there's, not, there's not going to be a situation here where... Any decision that's made is going to satisfy everybody. No, there will agreed. be dissenters. Um, there will be people who say, yes, delighted it's back. Let's get on with it. Fantastic to see the game back. I would be one of them. It'd be great to see the game back. I we all would. And there'll be others who say, no matter what, no matter what, what you say to me, no matter what the, the doctors have said to me, no matter what you specialists say to me, no matter what my club says to me, I'm not going on that football Let's pitch. Let's just remind until ourselves... Until there's a vaccine, a bit like you. I, until I, there's a vaccine. That's me. Well, maybe not until there's a vaccine, but until well, I know I'm safe. But well, let's just remind uh, ourselves you, the recklessness with which the UK government went into this problem, talking about herd immunity and letting Cheltenham take place. And then subsequently, we all found out what actually most of us knew, that that was something that should never have happened. Now, they can persuade us all they like because it gives us something else to talk about. But if I'm a footballer, I am not going back to work, Andy, until I know. I, my you own, don't know, Richard. My own, my own guess I is... I will go back to it. You will not know until there's a vaccine then. 
So you were not playing football until I was about Well, they're vaccine. talking about going through 2021 with no, no supporters well, in Well, there the you ground. go. There'll but no just vaccine. one other thing. Here's the most likely scenario for me right now. Maybe we start playing again. Maybe we start using neutral grounds. But I think that the, the six at the bottom will persuade the top six. There's no relegation. I think that, that becomes a factor. Well, Simon now, Jordan agreed with you. That was interesting. When, you, when Simon was on last week and he, I said to him, three questions in quick succession. Give me a yes or no. Will Liverpool be awarded the title? He said no, yeah. which surprised yeah. me. Well, they should be. Just give it to them now. Surprised me. I don't have a Will there be relegation? He said no again. Mm -hmm. And I said, so that means that we, West Brom and Leeds can wave goodbye to promotion. Yes. But we'll take the parachute payments. Now, if that happened, one last thing to settle, which is the Champions League place. I'm suggesting a playoff, a one-off playoff between Sheffield United and Manchester United for that Champions League So you're League saying there's place. nobody else involved? Nobody else involved. Why don't Wolves get involved in that? Uh, Wolves are right there. Yeah, but Wolves have played the the game. Sheffield United haven't. What game? Sheffield United are one back. Yeah, but you know who Sheffield United's game is? One back. And Wolves. No. Aston Villa, who are in the relegation. Well, and have played one game less. But they're not going down now. Are they not? No. Oh, we, right, if we restart, we've decided they're not. <laughs> well, all right then. Villa are staying up. We're okay with that. Then. <laughs> it's a good plan. It's one of your few plans I agree with. <laughs> Uh, it's, just, it's just extraordinary, isn't it? See, it always worries me on a Monday. I just have to quickly say something. It always worries me on a Monday because I sit in here in Qatar and there's, there's not, like everybody else in the world, there's not a great deal to do. But I know you pour through every single paper yes. that is available to you. So I'm always a bit wary on a Monday what's going to come out of his mouth because I'm never told in what he's going to In fairness to say. you, you you've, I think you've... Uh, and I want your response. I said the other day, the how you react is important. That There's only one first and, and, and we get it, which is great. Anyway, looking further into the week, tomorrow we'll be joined by a former international manager mm -hmm. who most recently took uh, his team to the semi-finals of the European Correct, Championship. Correct, he did. So that could be one of four, mm -hmm. could it not? Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll be back in the company of a Premier League manager on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, join us on Be In Sports where you found us today. We're here five days a week. For our international viewers, we're available on YouTube. And we're still setting the agenda, Andy. <laughs> Not sure about that, but we have a go. <laughs> we'll see you next time. In the meantime, please stay safe. Stay safe. <laughs>